Over the last two decades, there has only been one repeat Super Bowl champion. The New England Patriots led by Tom Brady and Bill Belichick in the 2004 and 2005 seasons. And the New England Patriots will be the first dynasty of the 21st century. Does this mean that history is against the Kansas City Chiefs? Should you pick against them? Are they dead in the water before the season has even started? Hell no, they aren't dead in the water. They still have Patrick Mahomes. If there's one quarterback in the NFL to break a two decades long streak, it's Patrick Mahomes. All right, but what if you don't want to pick the Kansas City Chiefs? What about picking Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles? In 2022, they had a high powered offense averaging 28 points a game, as well as a stout defense racking up a league leading 70 sacks. This netted them the one seed despite having to manage two weeks at the end of the season without an injured Jalen Hurts. They were able to retain Brandon Graham, Jason Kelsey, James Bradbury, Boston Scott, Fletcher Cox, and Darius Slay. Not to mention, the Eagles might have ended up with the best draft class of 2023. Who would have thought that drafting players from the team that won the national championship would be a good idea? But history isn't on the Eagles' side either. The only team in the last 20 years to lose a Super Bowl and go on to win the following year is the Tom Brady and Bill Belichick-led New England Patriots back in 2019. If you want to get real technical, the 2019 Patriots are the only team in the last 20 years to even get back to the Super Bowl after losing the year prior. I'm betting on history because if we don't learn from it, we're doomed to repeat our mistakes, which means the door is wide open for two new teams to compete for the coveted Lombardi Trophy. Trading for a new quarterback can end in bliss or it can end in complete mockery. The addition of Aaron Rodgers has the Jets primed to have a tremendous season. People will have some hesitation to pick them because of Rodgers' lack of recent playoff success and well, because they are the Jets. But there are quite a few reasons to have faith that this Jets team will be different. Rodgers' thumb should be back to full health. Yeah, the challenging injury he played with all last year, the injury everyone seems to be conveniently forgetting when they're talking about his ability as a quarterback going into this season? What seems more likely? Aaron Rodgers had two new receivers, a thumb injury that didn't let him practice enough, which led to chemistry issues, and in turn led to a down year after the previous two years had ended with regular season MVPs? Or the Hall of Famer completely fell off a cliff last year and won't be back to form in 2023? Garrett Wilson should make a huge jump in his second year. He's an incredibly polished player for someone in just his second season. I believe we see a jump like Justin Jefferson had in his second season. Expect Garrett Wilson Wilson to triple his touchdown receptions in 2023. Brees Hall is coming off an ACL injury which will probably limit him to start the season. By the second half of the season, we should see the dominant Brees Hall we witnessed before the injury. Oh, and the Jets just signed Dalvin Cook. Rodgers also has some familiar faces around him on the Jets as well. Nathaniel Hackett as offensive coordinator, wide receivers Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. There's also a new addition in McCole Hardman and the presence of a great head football coach in Robert Sala. The determining factor for whether or not the Jets have success this season is going to be if their defense is as good as it was last year. Several defensive metrics tell us the Jets have an elite unit and it would be incredibly surprising if this doesn't continue again this season. The Jets were 4th in total points allowed, 2nd in yards per play allowed, 4th in first downs allowed, 1st in passing touchdowns allowed, 6th in penalty yards, allowed just 32.3% of drives to end in a score, that means touchdown or field goal, not just touchdowns, which made them 5th best in the league, had the lowest blitz percentage in the league, meaning they were able to get pressure with just their front Front four, leaving more defenders in coverage, had the highest quarterback knockdown percentage, were third in quarterback pressures, and seventh in sacks. So yeah, this group is extremely elite. There are two concerns for this defensive unit, their average to below average run defense, and a lack of takeaways. A lack of takeaways can be explained by the lack of pass attempts at Sauce Gardner. You have to get thrown at to actually get interceptions. The league average last year for turnovers forced was 22, and I'd expect the Jets to at least be closer to the average this season. As for fixing the run defense, the Jets did not address the defensive line in the draft, nor did they make any huge splash moves in free agency to address this issue. But the improvements on the offensive side of the ball will help in this area. With Aaron Rodgers and an improved offense, drives will be sustained longer, giving the defense more time to rest. In addition, the Jets are going to score more points overall. That means opposing teams aren't going to be able to run the ball as frequently because they are going to be playing catch up. Needing to pass against one of the best secondaries in the league? Now that's a recipe for Jets success.
The Seattle Seahawks were not an elite defensive unit last year. They are quarterbacked by Geno Smith, which many will argue is a deficiency rather than a benefit, and they have to compete in a division with the powerhouse 49ers, who seemingly have infinite offensive weapons and improve their defense year to year. Oh, and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup are both healthy, and Aaron Donald is back to cause havoc. Despite the tough division, the Seahawks still have head coach Pete Carroll who will have his teams ready to compete no matter the circumstances. I mean, who had Seattle as a playoff team last year? Seriously, I want to know. They're going to need that constant energy from their head coach because the Seahawks have the most travel distance this season of any team despite not playing overseas. The Seattle Seahawks are a collection of overlooked and underrated talent. The Seahawks, much like the Jets, have a top cornerback in Tariq Woolen who should only get better, they have another pro bowler in Quandre Diggs, and they managed to snag another quarterback that perfectly fits their system in Devin Witherspoon. On top of that, they drafted Derek Hall, brought back a key vet in Bobby Wagner, have Uchenna Nuosu, an underrated pass rusher and drafted two offensive weapons in JSN and Zach Charbonnet. They also have Kenneth Walker, second year running back who in his first year was able to rush for a thousand yards and nine touchdowns. And he did it in just 11 starts. He did this after dealing with a hernia in the offseason right before the start of the season. His growth this year will take pressure off Geno Smith, allowing Geno to limit his turnovers. Speaking of Geno, he was fourth in passing touchdowns, led the league in completion percentage of the players that qualified at 69.8% and was sixth in quarter quarterback rating. The one negative metric against Geno Smith could be his turnovers, ranking 8th most among quarterbacks. This could be due to the fact that Geno was the 4th most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Only Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, and Russell Wilson were sacked more. Will the Seahawks O-line protection get better this year? It won't matter because the addition of JSN, who reminds me of a slightly less explosive Percy Harvin, will make Geno's life so much easier even if the O-line does not improve. The ball will get out of Geno's hand quicker, meaning there won't be a need for extended protection as frequently, leading to the Seahawks to sustain more drives utilizing JSN on third downs. Couple that with the downfield explosiveness of both DK Metcalf and an underrated Tyler Lockett, the Seahawks are set to have one of the most balanced offenses in the league. If you had told me a season ago I would have the New York Jets and Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl, I would have assumed you were crazy. I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm picking the New York Jets to win the Super Bowl. The Jets are going to beat the Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl 31-24. Jets fans, your suffering is finally over. Thank you for your time.